Hi, I'm Craig Delaney and welcome to Home Chat. In our second instalment, we talked about footings and foundations. In our first instalment, we talked about soils. Today, I'm joined again with John Whitehead, Senior Design Engineer from FMG Engineering. And today we're talking about the difference between raft and waffle pod slabs and when you should use one over the other. So John, so much talk around the industry, whether someone should have a raft or a waffle pod slab being right for their home. When should someone use a raft or a waffle pod slab? Well, I think before we go into that, we should maybe get a bit of understanding on what each of the different systems are. Both of them are um, effectively rafts. If you imagine a raft on a river, um, what we're trying to do is create a platform that's floating on top of the soil or in the soil um, for you to construct your house off. With the raft slab, um, the way that it's constructed is it's in ground. So we take an excavator, we make some trenches, we effectively fill them with concrete and that gives us a nice stiff platform. With the waffle slab, there's no in-the-ground excavation. Uh, the slab is cast on the ground um, and um, it's effectively just floating there. So when we've got the, the slab floating there, I guess with a waffle pod slab, one of the key things that, that we talk about in the industry is the load or how the weight of the house is supported. So how's the weight of a house supported between the two different types of a, of a slab? With um, a raft slab, um, you can have internal load-bearing walls, which is a slightly more older way of constructing houses. So some of the load um, is going to go to an internal um, wall, which I'm sure a lot of people have um, heard of, load, internal load-bearing walls. Yep. Um, with the modern house design, however, most of the weight is going to the outside of the house, so your outside walls and then down. The waffle um, is better for that system and that that's where we've got the bulk of our um, concrete and the bulk of our stiffness. Now recently though, under Australian standards, uh, board piers were brought in to go around the perimeter of a waffle pod slab. What was all that about? Um, we've come out of a significant dry, dry period. Um, now I believe um, they redid all the testing, uh, they redid the research um, and they found that there probably wasn't enough stiffness there. So they've introduced uh, these board piers to try and get the slab founded deeper um, into um, soils which aren't going to feel the effects of um, rain. Now certainly in the western northern suburbs where there is quite a bit of deep clay, that's a lot of water moving underneath a house. And these board piers seem to have to be need quite, or need to be quite deeper to actually tie to natural or strong ground. I is that true, John? Yeah, absolutely. Um, these suburbs we're seeing um, some problems coming out of. Um, and to account for that, we're just going deeper. Now, one of the, the key points that also is highly controversial at the moment is compaction reports with soils. Um, you know, there's, there's an old saying that we use, soils ain't soils, and certainly when people are buying uh, a block of land from a land estate, it is very much buyer beware, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, we're seeing a lot of certificates coming through where they are saying that they're going with the principle um, of the Australian standards, which they're meant to be testing to. Um, however, they are not taking responsibility for that compaction. So certainly there are some land estates that are very, very responsible Absolutely. and they will actually guarantee or sign off the soil that it, that it has met Australian standards, the way they've actually built up the, the land and others are saying that, look, we, we absolutely abide by the principles, but it's not that same level of endorsement or, or, or guarantee, is it? Absolutely, and I think um, for the house owner to get that peace of mind, it's worth going for the full certification. Now, even having said that, um, we're still challenged by those uh, sites that have got compacted uh, soils or field soils because it's still changing the dynamics of the ground. It's not natural ground supporting itself, is it? Absolutely. Natural ground um, is, it's had tens of thousands of years to get itself settled and, and normal. The uh, fill that's going into these sites, it's brand new. Um, it's going to have about twice as much reactivity um, as natural soils. Um, and that's just due to it being completely new soil. So when we're, when we're looking at this difference between a, a, a raft and a waffle slab, what's, what's the changeover between the two? What's the key reasons that we would go to one over the other? When you want a stiff slab, um, so we find a lot of the new suburbs where we have this fill coming in, um, where we have very deep fill, as I've already mentioned, it's almost twice the movement. So we need to get something really stiff there to make sure that there's going to be no movement within the house. If you have a site, however, that um, is a standard classification um, within the standard, um, so low uh, reactivity sites, quite happy to put a waffle on that, no worries. 
Okay, I mean, and this, when we're looking at the, the design of a, of a waffle slab, so the, the, the strength of the concrete, the amount of steel that goes in, it, it's, still, it's still good for a, for a house foundation though, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. The waffle system is a good system. When we look at the soil classifications though, there's, there's a range, isn't there? Like anything in, in life, there's a range. And, and when we get towards the top of the classification, we really should be jumping to the, to the next to the next level of, of steel, the next thickness of concrete, um, to, to really protect the house rather than just being technically correct. Absolutely, a lot of the house builders uh, that we come across just want it to the letter, um, to the absolute minimum standard that they can get away with. Our advice to you and others is that you should invest within the um, slab system that you should be upgrading, especially on the borders of these classifications. Well, particularly when this is, you know, our, our clients in many cases' biggest investment, they really need to protect it as much as possible. Absolutely, my advice is that is where you need to make your investment. It's not sexy, it's not pretty, but you really need to put the money into the ground. So there you have it. Some great advice from John Whitehead from FMG Engineering. Now. It wouldn't be Long Island Homes if we didn't give you some extra information. In our fourth video that will be released next week, we'll be talking about the reasons why slabs fail to give you some further insight, some further understanding of the troubleshooting that needs to go on to protect your home. So until then, take care.